Hey folks, uh, so today what we're going to talk about right now are uh, naming and drawing halogenated hydrocarbons, so or also known as halides. So uh, if you just take a look down at the uh, bottom of the screen here, you'll notice that I can put a square around chlorine. You can also put it around uh, fluorine. And so these are going to be our halogens. And remember, halogens are, oops, sorry, halogens are found in group 17 on the periodic table. And so it'll also show that right there. So they are represented in your data booklet by a Q. And so here, their formula is RQ, meaning a hydrocarbon bonded to a halogen, okay? So the different halogens and their prefixes, it's important to know these. These are uh, these here are listed in the data booklet. But fluorine is known as fluoro, and chlorine is known as chloro, and iodine is known as iodo, and bromine is known as bromo. And that is going to be named first. Okay, so when we name it, um, we're going to have to put those at the beginning of the hydrogen or halogenated hydrocarbon when we name it. So the next thing we'll talk about here is the uh, naming rules. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to circle and name the parent chain. So we want to make sure we circle the longest carbon chain and and we name that carbon based on our table of alkene or alkanes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to place a box around the um, place a box around the hydrocarbon that, uh, sorry, we're going to name a box around the halide, sorry, and the halogen that we find. So if it's an F, a C, L, a B, R, or an I, we're going to put a box around it. If there's more than one, we'll put more than one. We'll box each single one, okay? Uh, the next thing what we're going to, or that we're going to do is we are going to determine the prefix. So if it was an F, then it would be uh, fluoro. Um, so in this case, if you take a look down, uh, if you take a look down here at this diagram, I would take, um, I would have to number my carbon. There's only one, so I know it's going to be methane. But now I'm going to put a box around all the halogens, and you notice that there are four halogens, and they're all fluorine. So what we need to do is we need to notice here, um, this would be carbon number one if we're to number it. So we have to put one, and that's what I'm showing you right here, one, 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 dash, and then how many fluorines are there? There are one, two, three, four. And then we have to use the prefix petra, fluoro, to show that it's fluorine, but now in the naming we call it fluoro, and now we name our carbon after, and it's methane. And so the meth part came from the one carbon. Okay, so uh, there are four fluorine atoms that are attached to one carbon. So when we name it, one comma one comma one comma one dash tetrafluoromethane. Okay, so uh, we'll do a little practice in class with that, but uh, hopefully you understand that. For, you have to identify where the hydrocarbon is bonded to, which carbon. So it's important that you number your carbons. In this case, it's easy because they're all on one. But then also the fact that how many of them are there. So if there was only two here, then it would be difluoro, one, one difluoro. But there's four of them bonded, and there can be four bonds per carbon molecule, okay? or carbon atom, sorry. So we will move on, and you'll see some more of this, uh, these uh, rules. But now we're going to talk more about the drawing set of um, drawing halogens. So if I was to give you this name up here, I'm going to change my pen color. Uh, if I was to give you this here, so notice it says 1122-tetrafluoroethane. Right here, for sure, we know ethane means there are two carbons. Okay, tetra means there are tetra means there are four 
fluorines, so Fs, and you can see that, four fluorine atoms. This is two carbons, and because it is uh, ene, then we know it has a double bond, which is highlighted right there. Okay, so there's a lot to know. You have to know the carbon. If it's E-N-E, -E, it's a double bond. If it's A-N-E, it's a single bond. And if it's a Y-N-E -E at the end of the carbon name, then it's a triple bond. And then the prefix at the beginning here is going to represent your number of fluorines. Fluorine is named fluoro because that's the prefix when naming halogenated hydrocarbons. And then here we actually are going to see, um, right here we're actually going to see, this is going to tell what carbon. So that there's one fluorine on carbon number one, one fluorine on carbon number two. One of the chlorines will attach to carbon number two, and an another one will attach to chlorine number two. So really what we look at here is you see this, this drawing, the structural diagram. So one, so if we numbered these one and two, this would be one, one, one uh, tetrafluoro because one, one and two, two, tetra, one, two, three, four, fluoro, F, 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 and ethene, double bond, two carbons, ethene. So that's how we would name it. So uh, it gets tricky, but once you do this a few times, everyone just finds it extremely easy uh, once they actually do it. So hopefully you do too as well. So just want to talk a little bit about properties of these halides. Um, what you can expect with those. So ways that they're actually used. Um, halides are going to be used as refrigerants, uh, in aerosol cans, and in air conditioners. Now, these are going to be CFCs, and this is going to be a really important term when we do an, our environmental or section of the uh, unit, uh, these CFCs that cause ozone depletion, but they're called chlorofluorocarbons, so they're going to have chlorine and fluorine attached to carbon, uh, a carbon chain. So you're going to find these also, these hal or these halogenated hydrocarbons also found in pesticides, uh, dioxins and furans, all of which are extremely persistent. Okay, so they're very persistent. They stay in the environment for a long time. So, again, um, these aren't terrific, uh, actually, quite bad for the environment. Okay, so uh, one thing we have to look at is wind patterns, and so. What happens with these halides is eventually they end up in the poles, okay? So they get swung up to the north and they get swung down to the south. Um, and you can kind of see in this diagram, but again, as the currents, air currents move around and different weather patterns um, move around uh, a colder stratosphere, eventually these halides will end up moving upwards. And like I said, they're actually uh, responsible for uh, ozone depletion, so which allows UV, harmful UV radiation to enter the atmosphere or enter the earth, and then which is causing things like cancer and mutations and such. So anyways, that's all I have on halogenated hydrocarbons. Hopefully you've got something out of this. Uh, like I said, we will do some practice in class. And if you want to find some practice on your own, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, but hopefully those naming and uh, drawing rules helped. Okay, bye.